Uh, good morning, good morning. It, it is indeed such a pleasure to be here this morning. And because I love talking to folks that are dedicated to excellence. I know, I've been consulting for 40 years, and uh, I know of only about 10% of the managers actually want to try to achieve excellence. Most people just try to get by the day. And so it's always such a pleasure to be in a room full of people who are saying, what can we do to be excellent, not just what can we do to get by. So uh, I am indeed honored to be here and uh, uh, share an hours of your time this morning, and we will try to make it to our best use. And, and let me start off by asking a question. How many of you want to improve your organizations, get better profits, or accomplish your mission better? Okay, I'm glad to see that wasn't the kind of the, the thought call. So, so let's think about how to do that. And if you think about, there's, there's only basically two ways to do that. You can expand, right? You can build more of what you have. You can expand your functionality. You can expand your locations. You can expand your stores. Uh, or you can actually make what you have right now work better. Now, which one of those do you think is easiest, cheapest, safest, and a really wonderful investment? Build more or make what you have work better? Now, I'm going to give you some really, really wonderful news. The worse you are, the more potential there is. <laughs> so if you come here and, and I somewhat depress you by some of the things I'm talking about, go, hot darn, you know, this is great because there's all this potential out here. And, and so we, we have sort of a wonderful gold mine sitting right there. And I don't think we realize how much of a gold mine it is until you really see somebody that uses what they have at an extremely high level. And you see, this isn't just a 10% better. They'll do 100%, 2 or 300% more profitability out of the same platforms just by running what they have better, by better meeting customer requirements. So let's talk a little bit about that. I know one of the things we teach at Powell's Business Excellence Institute is using Powell's Sudden Service, which is a 2001 Baldridge winner and has twice won uh, level four of TNCPE. And, and is one of the best managed companies around and the other Baldridge winners of what have they learned and what can we share using the Baldridge model that will help you take back to your place and, and mostly have what you've got work better. So let's talk about these things, and particularly for today, uh, let's talk about just the economics of operational excellence. I wonder why people are not real passionate about that. What is the safest, best, surest investment you have is sitting there all the time, and, and you're already paying for it. And, and why people aren't excited about capturing that. Or if they try, they tend to grasp for air and miss it. Uh, so let's talk about five observable signs. And, and you can look at any business at, at all. And by the way, which is the most important business for you to look at? Your own, right? It's the toughest. So let's start. And the nice thing about being here is you can watch the Hilton and you can watch the Marriott work. And you can say, okay, how are, how are we doing in the hotel, Rin? And, and you can say, hmm, let's look for these observable signs. But not that we want to help Marriott. I mean, some of us might want to, but that's not the objective. But as practice, so when we get back to our place, let's look. In any business that you're in, you can kind of, within a minute, you'll be able to pick up on these signs pretty quick. But the only one that's really going to help you economically is your own. So let's, look around, let's practice looking around here so we can take it home. We're going to talk about what are those observable signs and, and what are the key elements of them? What really makes them work? Why do these things happen? Um, as Clay indicated, I get a pleasure of teaching companies from all over the country. Um, how do you really understand those principles so you can take them back? And the Baldrige model is a very, very important part of that. So PALS. PALS is one, where did this knowledge come from? We, uh, Clay indicated I've worked with seven Baldridge winners and several people who have won level, several organizations have won level four. And so if you look at the very best excellent companies, the ones that are really the role models for the country, and you say, what are they doing different that other people aren't? And you start noticing what's different. So that's where this came from. And one of them is I've had a, a nice association with Powell's Sudden Service, which I will uh, quite frankly say I think is one of the best managed companies in the country. Um, 
and, and, and a lot of lessons that we can learn from them. So let me just show you, because uh, since I'm going to reference them once or twice, let me show you a two-minute video that was made in 2006 when they won the, the Level 4 Quality Award for the second time. They had won Baldridge in 2001, and, and I contend they could win Baldridge again whenever they want to apply, but have chosen not to do that. Everybody eats when they come to my house. Yep, that's been the case since 1956. Pal's Sudden Service, serving up great food in a flash and delighting each and every customer. 12,000 hamburgers, 7,000 hot dogs, and 20,000 big iced teas a day. What's Pal's secret? Performance, excellence. It began with a breakthrough realization. Pal's isn't in the food business. It's a manufacturing company and an educational institution. Performance excellence begins with an understanding how great products are made for the best in quality, consistency, and speed. At Pounds, fresh made food in 18 seconds, more than four times faster than their best competitor. Perfect execution, built by employee feedback and the sharing of performance results with employees on a daily basis. High speed, high volume manufacturing with order mistakes at one in every 3,500 transactions, a 98% customer satisfaction score, and customer loyalty exceeding all other competitors. Employee training and motivation is key. When we open a new store, we'll give each hourly employee 120 hours of training. Somebody says, well, what if you spend all that money and all that time on them and then they leave? And I said, well, what if you don't and they stay? Innovative training methods, old-fashioned flashcards, to new iPod training, engages new employees to execute PAL's brand promise, great food in a flash. Delighting the customer is the end result. Friendly, one-on-one -on -one customer contact. Employees who are empowered to assure an extraordinary customer experience and food quality and flavor that is unmatched. With 20 units in Northeast Tennessee and Southwest Virginia, PALS is the gold standard for quality and the pinnacle of success in one of America's largest industries. Today, PALS is helping organizations both large and small discover performance excellence through PALS Business Excellence Institute, a 51-year tradition of delighting customers with each and every transaction. It's a motto that's the hallmark of a great Tennessee-based company. Everybody. So let's talk about PALS. The main difference between PALS and all of its national class competitors, by the way, it's a 23 cha store chain based within 80 miles of Kingsport, Tennessee, which is the extreme eastern portion of Tennessee. So 23 stores, privately owned, uh, mostly uh, drive through only. Uh, they have to compete with the national chains. McDonald, every national change you can think of is in our service area. And they, they really exceed in just about every way, but they exceed through operational excellence. And so let's think about um, you know, making what you have works better. And let's just um, think about some of the economics of that. And so I think if you think about the economics of having what you have work better, all of a sudden, your CFO is going to get excited. It's the best, quickest way. If you want to implement quality management with the least resistance, don't ask to do something new. Ask to do what you're already doing better. And you'll get a lot less resistance from it. So high rate of return with relatively little capital. Most people don't have a lot of capital to invest. And this is, doesn't really take very much. Um, people tend to want to advance by adding things. How about advance by making things you've got work better? Um, customers usually don't distinguish brands. So if you have multiple locations and half of them are doing not so well and half of them are doing great, people are not going to distinguish great. They're going to say the brand doesn't do well or the brand is inconsistent. Um, it's a wonderful way to get customers to come back. And I'll show you what these results can look like in a moment. It's the quickest way of getting return. Sometimes you can get returns in a month. Three months is what I would sort of target at. Let's really try to look at it. It's low risk because you're not doing a new market, a new product, a new anything. How about just doing what you're doing better? Um, it affects the top line.
because it helps you with repeat business. If you'll deliver on your promises better than your competitors will deliver on their promises, you will find that as an excellent business model. And it makes a big difference. Uh, I think customers are very reasonable. They're not demanding unreasonable stuff. They're usually just demanding, what I asked you to do, would you just do it? And do it every time. That's really the key. Not some of the time, not part of the time. Most of the time and every time is a huge difference in service standards. Uh, and it affects the bottom line. It affects costs, waste, uh, reworks, all of the things we're trying to get at. So it helps you in both ways at the same time. So what has PALS gotten out of it? If you think about it, their repeat business rate is three to four times what our competitors are in the same market. So let me just kind of think about the economics of that for a moment. And it's all through operational excellence. It's not through doing anything different. We can't buy grills that McDonald's can't grill buy, or Burger King, or Wendy's, or Taco Bell. Uh, we don't even have anywhere near the advertising power any of those would have. So we just do it by operational excellence, three to four times the rate. So if the average McDonald's customer comes back to their average McDonald's three times a, a month, which is true, the average PALS customer comes back to their average PALS three times a week. Do you think that makes a little bit of difference in the economics? And what brings them back is not different products, but being able to get the same wonderful product they want every time and not have to wonder. We think about the lifetime value of a customer is $25,000. So having customers come back is really pretty critical. Uh, this, the only other restaurant ever in Baldrige has also been a, a long-standing client of Powell's Business Excellence Institute. They're in Austin, Texas. They have eight restaurants in Austin, Texas. One of the, they have two chains. One of them is Rudy's Country Store and Barbecue, which is a 27-store uh, franchise chain. They have four of those restaurants. There are four. So here we're talking about the exact same platform, right? Therefore, make three times the profits and three times the sales of the average of the other 23. They're the same franchise. They just operate them better. So we're not talking about getting 10% more. We're talking about like 100% more. And here we're talking about 300% more. To just give you an idea, they invented the breakfast for the chain. They, and, and they invented breakfast so well and, and executed just this franchise that they make as much money by 10 o'clock selling burritos than McDonald's, an average McDonald's makes all day long. I mean, it's just fantastic what executional excellence can bring you. So if you were thinking about what you could observe, now I'm just talking about what you can see. You're going into a restaurant, you're going into a hotel, you're going into any kind of business, and of course the one we're really interested in is going into your own business, but let's think about others because it's easier first. What would you see? What I'd like you to do is write down in your pad, take a minute or two, and write down what would, if this was a really excellent Baldridge winning or level 14 CPE winning company, what would you expect to see if they were excellent in operational excellence? So tell me what you would actually see. So think of average restaurant, excellent restaurant, average hotel, excellent hotel. Average um, dry cleaning service, excellent dry cleaning, any kind of business you want. So what would you write down? What would you see? So take just one minute and do that. Write down a couple things and then share it with your neighbor, if you would, for a minute. And then I'll, I'll show you my, it's like, if you'll show me yours, I'll show you mine. And then I'll show you my list and we'll talk about it. So take a minute and do that. What would you see? Customer service, what would it look like? I mean, everybody has customer service. I don't know anybody that doesn't serve customers. What would, what would op, somebody who's operating excellent right on the top of the game, what would customer service look like? Passion, you know, Okay, passion. They, they might actually be interested in you being there. Wow. Wow, yeah. Okay, so tell me some more, of the, more indications. Eye contact. Eye contact. They're actually looking at you as opposed to, yeah, excellent, wonderful. And by the way, that, that's Dr. Debbie Harley McClaskey. So, uh, <laughs> but I would introduce, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, uh, so of course, yes, it's, uh, <laughs> we, we have the most wonderful conversations in the car and stuff like that. She also teaches leadership at East Tennessee State University. So I'm also a, a regular student of hers. Uh, tell they me some other things. They go beyond what they just see. I'm going to give you an that's example. It. 
wows wowed me, or pals wowed me, because I just got my dog from the groomers. We were headed home. I looked in the house to get a PGT. I love him. Excellent. Did not ask. Pulled up to the window. My dog is sitting in the car seat. She has her own car seat. And, <laughs> and she's sitting in her car seat, and you know, it's a warm day. The lady at the window handed me a bowl of water and two dog cookies. Oh, oh, wow. Wow. Oh, fantastic. And I mean, I was ecstatic. You can imagine how stunned I felt. <laughs> It's going beyond what going beyond. Customer, you know, what they say. Excellent, because if you just meet kind of the minimum expectations that keep you from fussing, that's what everybody does. But if you can go beyond like that, and uh, that, that is fantastic. I'm so okay. glad to hear that. Um, some other stories. Um, well, yes, sir. No story, but seeking feedback. Uh, seeking feedback. The idea of one of the things you can find excellent companies, if they're really, really good, they will get information from their customers on how to improve. If they're not, they won't. So you can find that, that you, excellent companies will just sort of suck it out of you. Uh, tell me some other things. How about in the back of the room? I know the back room was very active. What are some of the things you came up with back there? Is it clean? OK, is it clean? Do they care enough to keep the, the appearance nice? Uh, I, I know you probably don't want to go into a dirty restaurant, but you probably don't want to go into a dirty any kind of business. Does someone care enough to keep uh, the place looking neat? Some others from the back of the room. Do they know how to handle it when something's not gone right? That's right. When, when it gets a little beyond the ordinary, can they, can they handle it? Or if they can't handle it, can the company handle it very rapidly? Rather than, well, we really don't want you inconveniencing us. So you can see how a lot of these things. So what, what I'd like you to be aware of is all those things that really make a difference. When you go to have this wow experience, when you say, I really like what these folks, but they didn't do anything extraordinary, but they really met your requirements extremely well. Well, when I worked a lot with the Ritz Carlton Hotel Company, which was one of the Baldry winners I worked with, what, what they do that's so extremely good is they anticipate customer needs. And, and, and why, how they wow their customers is they don't ever want you to ask for service, they want to figure it out before you ask. And, and they were just extremely good at that, and it wows customers. Um, here's a list for you. Now, this is not the definitive of all end all lists, so I'm not trying to say this is like something that ought to be in stone or something like that. So what I'd like you to do is make your list. Make this your own, add to it, subtract it, divide it around, but then start looking for it. Look for it in other places and look for it in your own businesses. And, and, and if, if you don't see, you don't like what you see, Think about how to change it, because quality management in Baldridge can help you do that. So let's talk about these things. And so one of them is people are always busy. So just look for people standing around. It's really pretty easy. You know, you can watch standing around. And you'll find excellent companies, people don't stand around. Um, the supervisor doesn't have to issue any orders. When you hear the supervisor having to tell their employees what to do to do their job, that's a real sign of a problem. That's, so, but when they don't, the employees know how to handle it, and the supervisor rarely intervenes because the employees are enabled and trained to do it. The service flow is fast but not hectic. You'll see it very, very smoothly working, and, and it's really going at a good pace, but it's not at a frantic pace. It's not like the... Uh, uh, Chinese fire drill kind of world. It's really very, very ordered, but it's very fast. Um, hard to find waste. When you look around, you don't really find waste. And waste is a pretty observable thing. You see a lot of it if you look for it. And, and one of the challenges we give uh, all of the people that attend our PALS business BEI classes, that we get to actually go in a store, do a store tour, and I ask them to do something at PALS, I would ask them in no other company I know of, try to find any kind of waste whatsoever. Now you would find it, but it's much, much harder to find in excellent run companies. The last one is all employees are focused on the customer. They're really saying, what can I do to provide that experience? What can I do to serve you? It actually costs you comp your company just as much to serve your customer sloppily as it does well, and in fact, it may actually be more, not only more effective, but more efficient uh, to, to serve them well. So let's talk about these things. Now, to kind of take the next level, let me describe this a little bit more. 
Now these slides are out on the website, uh, and, and as Clay mentioned, that it, it signed the list will send you a one-page summary article. Doesn't quite, the article doesn't quite go into this level of detail, but, but has these, these key things. Here's what you're sort of uh, looking at. People just never stop. They're always doing something productive. PALS has this really, really weird standard. They want eight hours pay, eight hours work for eight hours pay. So every second you're on the clock, you're working, doing productive work in an environment that is totally customer dependent. It's the old question, a riddle, you want a riddle? What do customer service people do when there's no customers? If they sit around and stare at the ceiling, you've got a nice average or less business. If they do something useful, maybe to set themselves up to serve the next customer better or to, to learn something or to do something useful, help their fellow employees, then you've got a much more excellent company. They're always doing productive work. We're not talking about busy work. Busy work is horrible. It's really bad for everybody. So we're talking about productive work. Um, they do their work first before they help others. It's really bad for people to go out helping other people when they, their job is not done right. You, all you do is do a disservice to the team. So watch what you, happens if somebody's helping each other. Is someone else having to cover their station because they didn't do their job? Um, you never hear it's not my job. I mean, it doesn't take long, even for customers, if you listen, you'll hear the not my job equivalent coming from the people who are serving you. I'm sorry, somebody else always has to do that. It's not my department. How many administrative kind of functions do you go into and you hear the, it's not my department, or you have to go way over there to get that? It's just not my job. And people seem happy and engaged. You'll find one of the things that's interesting about that, somehow we thought keeping people busy is, is like punishing or harmful. It's actually the most disrespectful thing you can do is to waste people's time. So if you have jobs that cause people to have nothing to do, you are, are not only being disrespectful to your, to your customers and company, the person you're being most disrespectful to is your employees. People do, because what that tells them is that I don't have any worth. I really don't have anything to do for two hours a day. It makes people feel worthless. And you need to design that out of your systems. The second thing, the supervisor doesn't have to issue many orders. Just listen for what the supervisor's saying. If they're telling somebody how to do their job, it says you didn't train them in the first place, you didn't enable them, you don't trust them, and you are, are poorly serving everybody. So supervisor, you find is there, observes, but very rarely has to intervene. Uh, the jobs are designed for each person to do their job right. That's why the supervisor doesn't have to intervene. And the persons are trained to do the, now here's the difference between, you heard that quote on PALS, between the average company, everybody trains their employees. But let, let me, uh, here's a poll I've been taking now for over a couple years. How many people train their employees to do the job 100% right, 100% of the time at their very busiest moment? How many of that's your training standard? Let me just see a show of hands. Okay, here's a question I have for you. You said it's not 100%, so what percent are you training your people? 10% errors, 5% errors, 15% errors? We deliberately program in this to happen by how we train people, how we enable people. And, and at PALS, we go, every time we do this, this means orders that are wrong. And by the way, our orders are 10 to 50 times more accurate than our competition. We have one complaint out of 3,500 orders. Is that what you get out of your quick service restaurant? People come to PALS so you don't have to look in the bag because you know it's right. I know other places they say, David, you don't understand, I don't look on the bag to see if it's wrong, I look in the bag to see what's wrong. Now, and how bad do you have to be for customers to feel that way? And actually, you don't have to be very bad to feel that way. One, out of, one order out of every 10, one order out of every 20 will cause customers to have that kind of behavior. Uh, supervisors coach, but they don't tell a person how to do their job because they already know it. The third one is service flow. This is this, you can see it just running very smoothly. Things are being served as fast as you can. At PALS, we serve a customer, we have a single queue drive through There's no pull arounds. A car leaves PALS every 18 seconds on the average. That's 
three to four times faster than anybody else can do. So while we're making one-tenth to one-fiftieth the errors, we're going three to four times faster with the exact same workforce they have. Only we do things different. Um, no wasted motions. You don't have a lot of running around that's not needed to be running around. Little in-process inventory. Those that attended the lean exercise yesterday saw that the, the real devastating uh, effect of in-process inventory as an indicator that things aren't going well. Uh, the service flow works well at all volumes. It'll handle really slow times and it'll handle really fast times. It's not really good at one and really poor at the other. It can flow between them. The processes run to their capacity. You can only do so much. And at that point, you, you try to go faster, you tend to, to warp your system and break it. So you, don't, you have to respect the capacity of which things can run. Somebody said, well, pals can do every 18 seconds. Why can't they do every 15 seconds? Well, we don't know how to yet. We're learning how, but we don't know how yet. Um, little idle chatter. People are really focused on their job. Here's an interesting thing. If you can plan your menu for tonight at work, your job isn't, very, isn't making full use of your talents. Um, you really, if you've got a job that really absorbs your talents and time, you really don't have time to think about everything else. A really disgusting thing uh, from, I think, the Covey surveys came up with is that the average employees in, in, are spending, in, in office type of jobs, are spending one to two hours a day surfing the net. What does that tell you? Uh, not a lot of I intensely focused on the job and standardized processes are followed. I'll tell you a secret. There is no model of excellence in any business whatsoever without rigid standardization. Rigid standardization is an absolute key to excellence. Doing it your way anytime you want to do it. Now giving it the customer their way, but you use standardized processes to do that. You don't use freelance processes to do it. So there is no, I used to think arts like writing and art, uh, drawing and things like that. But you find when you look at world-class artists and world-class authors, they have very, very rigid processes that they follow. But they're world-class executioners of those processes. Hard work, hard to find waste, rework. Look for things that have to be done over. Uh, defective products. One of the keys is you can't be passing defective products on. It has to be cut at every step. No excessive inventory, very limited customer complaints. Uh, people are not underutilized. One of the real keys that I think we're wasting is we have a lot of the really, really talented people, some of which are in this room. And their skills are not being fully utilized towards the mission and fulfilling the key customer requirements. And that's what this is all about. How do you get this to happen more often? A and. Um, and people are, are at work, on time, and ready to work. At PALS, when they clock on, they're working for the next four to five hours without a break. Because we really didn't say clock on and then go take a break. You're supposed to be ready to work when you get clock on, not clock on and then do all that stuff on our time. Or else you're just not ready. Uh, all employees are focused on the customer and their experience. We talked about proactively anticipating. You really can't have excellence in service unless you have people looking out for your customers and saying, what is it that they need that they're not getting? If you can go in this hotel and look lost, and an employee sees you and just walks by you, that's not good. But if they come up and say, uh, sir, can, can I help you? Not that you, know, they, they, you probably don't want them to say, well, you're looking really dazed. You know? <laughs> Do I need to call somebody? Uh, you know, at least, you know, but you can tell when somebody's confused if you look for it. I sincerely apologize when the things aren't right. Let's not figure out how to blame you for that problem. Uh, employees can see uh, and observe customers. The more closer we can get them to see customers, the better things are, and they can pick up on nonverbal signals. Uh, employees care if the customers get a great experience. I can tell you, pals, is just absolutely <laughs> devastated when someone calls us and says, well, you left out a hamburger out of our order. I wish I could tell you that just never happens. But it does, and we feel really bad about it. Somebody got home for dinner and somebody there didn't have their meal because we're a drive-through. And, and this is just not good. So let's talk about, uh, uh, are you ready to do some work again? 
I'll just take silence as a yes, because I'm just an unbelievable optimist. But let's talk about the five things we talked about, and I'll show them to you in just a moment. And here's what I'd like to do. So we're going to practice here for a minute. The first one was always busy doing productive work. What are those key elements that make that work? I want to kind of go a little bit deeper. I want you to think about what is it that the company had to do to cause this so somebody's always busy. Now, one of the things, I'll, I'll just give you an example. You've got to be staffed properly. If you overstaff, you really create a situation where people are saying, oh, I don't have anything to do because we've got eight people to do six people's work. Now, I know you've got situations where, where business varies, but you've got to be able to handle the peaks and the valleys with that situation. And if you overstaff for that, then you, you have forced non-productive work. So proper staffing is, 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 is critical. Tell me something else you would put on this list. This is just a little practice. Accountability. Accountability. That basically, in account, how about that you actually told them that if you're on the clock, you need to be doing productive work. And when you run out of stuff to do, let's talk about it and see what we can do to work this out. Is that instructions you've given your folks? Or it's like you catch up at your time? Okay, give me one more and then we'll start. Yes, ma'am. Employees always know what the productive tasks are. Okay, they know the productive tasks are. And they know the order to work in them. If I don't have any of this, I step back and I do the next ring of stuff. If I don't have any of this, I step back and have the next ring of stuff. And I'm authorized to take these rings, but I can't go to the second ring until I'm done with the first ring. At, at PALS, the way this looks is, is for a, a, French, for a person making French fries, one of the jobs we have. You have a French fry order, you make French fries. Well, what if you don't have a French fry order and you're all caught up? Well, next thing you do is one step back is, oh, you've been using up your own materials. There's a limited amount you can have up front. Well, go restock your own station, not somebody else's station, your own. I'm all stocked up. A step back up. How about getting your station neat and clean? Because when you use your station, things get used up and things get dirty. So get it back, back clean again. Hey, well, I've got my station pretty clean and stuff. I'm going to look to my right, look to my left, and see who needs help. And we've trained people to be able to help their fellow teammates. And notice how it just all sort of works automatically and just got a series of things. Okay, so what I'd like you to do is this. Here's the assignment. Uh, we'll probably take, about, um, probably take about five minutes or so to do this, and then we'll talk about it. What I'd like you to do, and what I'd like to do is sort of divide this up. Now, those of you familiar with Baldrige, did you hear anything that Baldrige doesn't promote? Did you hear the things that Baldrige does promote? Now, did you hear anything that sounded sort of um, extreme? What did you hear? Oh, how about telling people the mission? How about telling people the vision? How about training people properly? How about having the expectations set up? Isn't this like Management Basics 101? But, but not at the normal level, the average level. If you want to be extraordinary, you've got to do something the ordinary management team, which is very talented and hardworking, is not willing to do. How about just doing what you're supposed to do better? Not different, but better. Not 90% right, but 99% right. Not 9 out of 10 employees will greet your customer well, but 10 out of 10 employees will greet your customers well. Any, anybody can do the basic service functionalities. Everybody has to to be in business. But if you're going to differentiate yourself, what gets you in that 60, 70th, 90th percentile where customers will say, I really like the experience. Uh, I work a lot with Roadrunner restaurants who have 92 convenience stores uh, in, in four different states. And, and they know they have to get people to drive by their competitor's drive through to go to theirs. So what would cause their customers to not go to the nearest convenience store but go to their convenience store because they like what they're getting from them better than what they're getting from these others. Uh, I can't add to your list, but I can show you my list, just in all fairness. Uh, here's some of the things. Um, setting high expectations. I heard some things around that, but I think it's, we really under-expect what people are capable of delivering. And they won't deliver any more than you expect. So that sets a ceiling. Um, Positive peer reinforcement, not overstaffed, um, well-trained. I, I think we heard most of all these things. 
Isn't it nice that you all could be up giving this presentation? But where is it important that this presentation is given? Stand. Yeah, at your place. That's the one where you really have the power to affect. And I can tell you none of these are against your company policy. I hope. Um, service flow, well designed, fully staffed, standardized. I and mean, didn't we hear most of these things? Good, su good support process. A lot of times your work process can't work unless your support processes are also world class. Elsewise, your, your work process just keeps tripping because they weren't set up for success. Hard to find waste. This is very much lean. This is very much, you've got to stop it at the source. Uh, the only way to really get it is that everybody get their job right. And, and what do you need to do so errors are never passed on? Once you pass them on, you just multiply their cost and complexity that nobody passes an error on. At PALS, we never pass an error from job to job under no conditions. Um, how about focus on the customer? Well, I, I, it is about hiring as well. It's not just about hiring. But how about hiring people that actually care about your customers? We can't have anybody work for PALS that does not dedicate it to delighting the customers. If they're not dedicated to that, they don't have any business being on our payroll. And then it's our job to enable them to carry out what they're already naturally inclined to want to do. Uh, a culture of putting customers first. A lot of words, but do you really back it up with deeds? I'll recover, by, recover when you do make a mistake. I'll repeat this is a key positive reinforcement. Um, this is basically what I have. I think you all did a wonderful, wonderful job. And, and, and I think it sounds like most of you were qualified to teach this. And, and I hope the other thing that you'll do is, will you, will you play a little game today? And, and if we go back to the five parts of, of looking. So these are observable things. Would you look for this like during lunch and during break and the next business you go to? Just watch for it. And watch for those companies that are excellent and then try to figure out what are those things that you just mentioned are really happening behind the scenes that are enabling you, the customer, to see this. And then go into your own workplace and see what you see. And I can tell you the devastating impact of having people sit around, waste their time, either because things are broken, they're waiting for something. People always seem to be waiting for something. Uh, and uh, what can we do to eliminate those type of things so we can fully engage our employees by fully utilizing their talents? And um, hey, we'd love to have you come to Kingsport and participate in the Powell's Business Excellence Institute. Clay would like me to tell you what our email address is. Um, uh, we actually have a website uh, that you can pick up, palsbei.com.